Well, I think today is the day. <laughs> Everything's moved on quite nicely in here, but this definitely needs to go out. It's my beans. So I think what I'm gonna do is get them outside. And well, the temperature's gonna be forecasting about nine or 10 degrees tomorrow. And then it's gonna be a bit warmer. So I think they'll be fine. Right, I'll get those out and then we'll see where they're gonna go. Well, there's a bit of a breeze today, which isn't perfect for planting beans, but these are pretty well developed and hopefully we can get them in without too much damage from the wind. So I've given this a good weed through last week and I'll take a few of the emerging weeds out as I go. But otherwise it's a fairly simple task. And this bean pole that I created over a year ago now has stood the test of time quite well and certainly not been bothered by the winter winds. So I can just tighten it down a little bit, but it's pretty sturdy. So on with the planting. Well, this really couldn't be any simpler. All I'm gonna do is make a hole just inside these canes. Otherwise, if they grow out without any support, then I end up having to tie them back in. And these root trainers, hopefully, will just open like a clam and give me a ready-made plant to bury into the hole. And there we go. So, quite simply, get myself some soil out, get down quite deep, and then just drop that one in and pour the soil back around it. And then I'll give these a water in once I've got them all in. But really is a very nice and quick process. Just do another one. And just push the whole root out. Use my trowel just to lift the last bit of soil. And the soil is very moist underneath. And I'll still give them a water, but it really is a good time because the soil has been dampened down by rain in the last few days. So hopefully they'll all get a good start. Right, onward. That didn't take me very long and they're all in. Hopefully the wind won't be too much tonight. We don't want any broken stems from freshly planted beans, but there is a risk. But I've got plenty of spares if anything untoward should happen. And a few of those will be shared with other people. But keep a couple just in case we get any breakages. Otherwise, they look okay. Just need a bit of a water now, get them underway. time to clean these paths. So I'm gonna get most of these weeds out and then put a layer of chicken compost on top. And the idea being that that will feed the roots for the squash and the pumpkins that are going in these beds. But this has got overrun in a very short space of time. So I'm looking forward to weeding it. I'm gonna use that trusty slicing oscillating hoe, which takes it out really nice and quickly. Right, let's get underway. Well, I definitely left that too long, particularly the central path because the weed just got a bit too entrenched. So don't leave your weed in too long. Otherwise it just makes it hard work. But I got there, got recovered and I'll just let this wilt in the sun before I put the path on. 
Okay, I think that's me done on pass for today. The weather ain't great today. It's cold and it's windy, not perfect for the beans that I've put in just recently. They seem to be doing okay. The leaves are pretty big, so they are being bashed around a little bit. Some serious damage on that one. Until they get off the ground, they are prone to the slugs eating them. Hopefully these plants are big enough that they will survive that onslaught without too much of a problem. And really winding them round the bean canes at this point in time is a pretty thankless task. It's not really doing much, but they seem to be okay. So fingers crossed, this wind won't be too strong for too long and we'll get past it. I was hoping today to tackle this grass, but it is so wet. So I think that's not gonna happen. What I was gonna do is put some grass clippings onto my raspberries. An idea that has been shared by a number of subscribers and viewers because, well, the weeds will just continue to grow on the base of these raspberries and in the soil. I have given it a good hoeing over, but you can see still one or two pushing through. Well, quite a lot pushing through. Just get this one behind this wire will help it out I'm sure get myself organized sorry about that right there we go so I'm thinking I'll probably just take these last few weeds out with the hoe and put grass clippings on it when I get to cut the grass which as I say is not today okay well I did these squash beds or paths a few days ago as you will have seen just previously in this episode and now I'm going to cover this with the chicken bedding. I'll take you down and show you. So my theory is that the chicken bedding full of chicken manure of course is a good thing if it's put onto those paths. It's not directly in contact with anything in terms of what I'm growing, but it does seep into the soil. So this is what I've got left. I've got a diminishing flock of hens, so consequently the bedding quantity is diminishing, but I think that'll be enough for the job. So I'm gonna load up a few wheelbarrows of it and get it onto those paths. If I see any weeds following my weeding session a few days ago then I'll pull those out of the time so let's get underway so my choice of tool for this job is this long handled shovel also from a German supermarket other supermarkets are available but it enables me with this rather loose bedding to get underneath Although, it, I've got to say, it's feeling a bit solid, so I might have to resort to a fork. We'll see, and we'll just see how far this bedding that I've got will actually go this time. Hopefully across the three paths that I've got. Right, I'll carry on. Well, I do like to give a bit of a gap between weeding an area like this and covering it with a mulch. It just gives you a chance to see the weeds that you missed and just make sure that you've done them some damage before you put the mulch on the top. There's not a great deal here, but just a little bit that's survived its last onslaught. So I'll just 
cover these last few paths by making sure that I've got those weeds up and then we'll drop a few loads down and then spread it across. Well, if it felt cool before, it doesn't now. After six of those barrows, I've warmed up. Okay, so the next step is just to spread this along the path. Pretty simple. I'll get my rake and get on. There she blows. You can see how this chicken manure has rotted down a little bit more. It's a much darker color and the fresher stuff's a bit paler, but it doesn't make any difference. It's all quite strong and probably more suitable for this sort of use than putting anywhere else in the garden. So that's got down pretty much to the bottom. There's some pretty well rotted chicken manure right at the base of that heap now, which I think probably is suitable for other uses. So we'll probably just put things on top of it, but if I needed something, then I would consider taking this. A bit of ivy growing into it there, which I had to remove. But this really is a bit like sort of fresh compost and there are worms in it. So it's really good stuff. And I'd probably put that at the bottom of a pot because it's going to be quite rich. Right, let's see what's next. Couldn't help but stop next to my potatoes. You can see them all growing through those grass clippings that I put on top. It really does help to keep the moisture in. And I think the top row have all sprouted. That one seems a bit slow. That one's sprouted. I can see something there that one has. So all of them bar that one over there has sprouted and it's probably just hovering underneath. Can't see it at the moment, but we'll let it be for a while. But that's good news. And these garlic, they're doing really well. I did notice that the garlic that I've got outside of my polytunnel has already produced some flower heads, which is a bit disappointing. It's my first time growing garlic in tubs and these were coming on really nicely. And this morning, they've got these heads on them. So, I don't know, people cook with these and I might well do that, but it is a bit of a shame. Hopefully it won't cause too much problem with the bulbs, which are a little bit way off being harvested yet. I'm gonna head into the polytunnel because the sky is looking, well, quite heavy. I think we're in for quite a rainstorm very soon. While I'm here, I'll show you the pears. I'm so delighted that the pears have fruited and they're swelling and you sort of can't see them for a minute and then everywhere you look, there's pears, which is fantastic, looking like we're gonna get a really good crop. Even under here, we've got a good four or five. What's interesting is they're not growing in clusters. They're sort of dropped a number of the pears and we've got single ones left. I see that as a good thing because the branches get so heavy when you get a cluster. And if you've got that single pear, my, my logic says that all the goodness will be going down that branch into a single pear. That's got to be a good thing. Blowing around pretty heavily there. Right, let's have a look in the tunnel, see what's on my agenda. It's a bit warmer in here than it is outside. So it's looking fresh in here. And probably the next thing I've got to think about, and I haven't got any fresh shop bought compost, which I think I prefer for these, is my house tomatoes. They're at that size where I think they'll benefit from potting on. And I can already see a truss there. Fantastic. Those tomatoes are amazing. My basil is just 
going for it. Really looking good. Just need to make sure it remains fed and watered well. And I've got all this lobelia, which is pretty slow at the moment. I think just waiting for a bit of a warmer spell and I'll be pushing that out. And well, you can see I've prepared my squash bed, a pumpkin bed, and the squash and pumpkins are really doing well. And I don't think I'm gonna be potting these on because I think by the time I've potted them on, they'll be almost ready to go out. Just get rid of this cooler spell that we're having. I'm gonna move that one out. This is the, I think it's the purple sprouting broccoli because it's just not getting much light. I'll drop it down there for a minute while I make some space. And, you know, if you starve something like that of light, then you just end up with leggy plants. So just make sure as things start to get a bit leafy that you're giving everything a bit of space. Otherwise, they do end up leggy. Right, give one a bit of light. But you can see in here how these courgettes and pumpkins are all coming on nicely. And I think my kale will need to go out next. And I'm just gonna wait for a less windy day for that. It's not a good day for planting. The plants that you put out will dry so quickly, having just been taken out their pots and put into the ground. Strawberries are good news. As you can see, they're coloring up. We're not far off our first punnet of strawberries. I have to get some cream in. There's one here, and I've got a little bit of coloration going on in there. So there's a lot of fruit on those five baskets, particularly this one. And I think that's gonna be a smaller fruit, but there's an awful lot of them, which is great. And those look like a bigger fruit, so that's good. On the carrot front, I'm pleased to say that I've had germination, I think, everywhere. Let's just have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, every single one. So I'm just going to let those grow on just a fraction more and then go through the clipping process to take out the ones that I don't want to keep one strong one. Sometimes I go to two strong ones until I'm absolutely sure they're doing well. But the good news is, on the face of it, I won't need to transplant any where I've got a dud. And that really helps to prevent the carrot from getting checked back and not doing well. So that's good news. I put my tomatoes in. Oh, a week or so ago now. And I didn't do any sort of clipping out of the side shoots because I was conscious that they'd taken a bit of a shock having transplanted them into pots. But now I can see that I'm gonna to have to start that process because we've got some pretty strong side shoots coming in. I don't want those in the early days, apart from these two where it's recommended that you keep a side shoot till you get a truss and then you clip it. The last thing for today is gonna to be get those side shoots clipped out. Ah, sorry about the dog barking. All of those of you that have dogs might find your dogs are a bit excited by it. There's been a kennels opened and they use the field to give the dogs recreation. And I think I've hit recreation time. Right, so normally I just pinch these out and if they are tiny, pinching them out is a relatively easy thing to do. But if they get a bit bigger this year, I'm going to use some clippers because I'm anxious that when you just crunch and squash one of those side shoots, you leave a bit of a mess. And I just wonder whether that opens the plant up to be sort of infested by blight or some other sort of disease. So I think a clean cut is probably better than me mashing it. But looking at these, they're all, that one's a bit thick, so I'm just gonna clip him. But most of the others are just simply pinchable. But I did notice further along, I've got a few that have got 
some fairly substantial side shoots which I want to take out and the earlier you take these out the better as long as you don't leave enough in the V between the stem and the branch so that it just regenerates and starts growing again so it is a fine line got a bit of moss growing there as well so it's a very sort of quick job but trust me you miss them every time I go through and do this I go back the next day and I find one that I've missed so the best thing to do is to look most days and then you keep on top of it and the idea of course is that we've got the plants energy all growing into sending it up rather than out and once they start growing out you get a big unruly bush so I just want them to go up at this stage of the game anyway and I've got flowers or buds forming on there I've got two on there so all these tomatoes are well underway and having planted them they were all leaning over a bit they've all stood up nicely so just expect that to happen if you transplant it's not a problem right I'm going to get on these are Roma and they seem to have a far more leafy habit than the Latar which is one of my favorites <laughs> Well, that's me done for today. I do hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, why not like and subscribe? And you'll get my uploads every Wednesday and every Sunday at 8 p.m. Hope you've had a good week and hope the weather warms up for you. Good times. <laughs>